Greetings, as I, Tantus Nerev and Jacobin, your Lord and Emperor here at the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. Hey, we're going to be talking more about Pathfinder Day. I hope you're having a great day. If you're joining me live on Twitch, hi Twitch, always good to see you. If you're joining me live or later on on YouTube, live on YouTube? I could do live on YouTube at some point in time, but for now, no. If you're joining me later on on YouTube, hi YouTube, uh, Twitch, hey, follow, would be great. YouTube, subscription, likes, ring the bell, and the comment for both groups of you is, have you played a Ifriti? a Freet or a Nihiris, as they're now called, since we've changed the name with the new core system. Um, so just keep in mind that they... When I talk about Nihiris, I'm talking about Ifrits today, uh, if you're looking at older editions of Pathfinder. They're the same thing. But yeah, that's what we're going to be diving into today. Uh, another Geniekin. So I hope you're ready and excited and can let me know, hey, if you've played one before. But as I always start out with, because I'm really nice about these things and like talking about them, is some uh, books that you can dive deeper into information about them if you want to from both 1st and 2nd edition Pathfinder. From 1st edition Pathfinder, of course, the Advanced Race Guide is a great place to go looking. Blood of the Elements. And then, of course, from a 2nd edition, the Ancestry Guide. And the Rage of Elements. So you can look at all of those to get some information on your friend's the Nari. So yes, let's talk about them. The Nari, also known as the Ifrit. Um, again, we'll probably now, more into the future, refer to them as the Nari. It's one of those ones that's changed because of, you know, things with the new core books and moving away from the stuff with D&D. But <coughs> regardless, these are the genie kin descended from mortals and beings from the elemental fire plane. So that, that's, as, that's as simple as it is for their um, descending. They have pointy ears, red or molten horns, flickering hair, sometimes scales the color of charcoal covering their limbs or brass colored skin. Um, they prefer very bright, revealing, and fancy clothes. Though those kind of natural tendencies towards them. There are those that become champions and oftentimes are redeemers in that case, especially those that serve Saren, right? And clerics like the Forge of Fire de uh, deities like uh, Shizuru, uh, Atria, uh, Yumiri. So, what are the Nahirs? They're a product between a mortal and a Freet, most likely. That isn't the only one that can create them. Less commonly, uh, Munashir or Salamander can end up with a human uh, and create a Ifrit. And some, or I'm sorry, um, uh, a Nari. And there are times a Nari is born from two human parents. That can result of curse, magic, some kind of uh, things like that. I've talked about with other genie kins that if their parents are exposed to primal elemental ma uh, magic of a certain kind for whatever reason, then yeah. Um, the rulers of uh, Medina Mudaya sometimes use powerful magic to seed Naris in the universe before contacting to serve as agents of the Domain of Flame, um, but not all such Naris accept, even if they've had the elements seeded into their parents for them to be born. So, because elemental fire, that power tends to be less encountered by most people, except for kittens. Hi, Foggy. Hey, everybody on stream and live and, and on video. Say hi to Foggy. She says hi. Kitten interruption. Not edited out. Yeah, 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 Foggy. There you go. Up to no good. There you go. Um, in this case, there are beings from the elemental plane of fire, since it does have a lot of control and influence that, you know, try to seed it. Add it a little bit out there. Um, and of course, uh, Mita Mudaya is also known as the City of Brass on the Plane of Fire, or in the Domain of Flame. So keep that in mind. If you've heard of the City of Brass, that's that's the same one. Ah, oh, God damn it, Foggy! Give me a second here to get a cat out from the very bad spot it's in. Get her ass out of there, Foggy! Come on. You get your ass out of there. She's behind the computer. Getting into wires and stuff. Oh no, you're getting caught again. You're getting caught again and showed more on camera because you're naughty. 
You're super naughty. Look at you. Filled with naughtiness. Mmm, kitten on camera. Enjoying everybody of the world. If everybody sees this video, they get to see kitten. Live kitten play. Up to no good. That's it. Get another place in the room. Get up to no good. <coughs> so, a lot like their element, which has a very heavy influence on them, many, though not all, Neri's are tend to be hot-headed. Um, go uh, live life to the fullest, live for the moment. Things that's very related to their flame nature tend to be very forefront. Even if they're not naturally that way, they do have those tendencies. So it's sort of like, it's in your element for me because you're connected to fire. Even if you're not quite that way, as some of them just live up to those elements and their nature. Many have a difficulty adapting to things like cities due to their these uh, tempestuous uh, personalities and occasionally pyromania that does exist within them. But these essences of their personality and their behavior are very rarely because of malice. Sometimes it is. Uh, many have fit better into tribal societies where they can rise in the hierarchy due to their instincts to explore and conquer the surroundings. Uh, many are vagabonds, loners by nature, and only have a very few close friends. There is this hunger for power and glory that does exist within them, again connected to that elemental nature of fire. So many consider making a name for themselves through great achievements, leading them to excel at whatever they do. They usually see other individuals as tools to be controlled uh, and get along easily with controllable la races. Uh, both, though, as well as elves, whose calm, aloof demeanor and tempers uh, their impulsiveness, and Cambians, who share many physical characteristics with them. They do have a very appearance that could be compared to Cambians. They try to avoid sylphs and are generally disliked by halflings, dromars, and dwarfs for their various natures that most of them have. And we're not even talking about ones that are clerics, but those that follow a deity or here to organize religious structure. structure. Um, they have mindsets that most of them aren't really great with that. Like, if a Nahiri becomes a cleric, sure, you're into that organized religion. But if you're not a cleric, most of them tend not to go to that. Those that are religious uh, are very faithful. They do dive deep into it. And they worship fire-related deities. Serenre, Yumeri are pretty big ones. A subset of them worship uh, Shaika. Uh, who they truly believe to understand the destruction and rebirth heralded by fire. Um, so, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. A little cough there. Let's talk about some variants of them. There are lava souls, known as magma ifrites, uh, or in this case magma nari, whose fluid is intense, willing to drop old paragraphs and pursue new ones, no matter their stability, invoking a cycle of creation and destruction even in their own lives. They are dark-skinned, uh, riven with blazing lines, and possess bright orange or uh, hair or eyes. They tend to acquire and discard body modifications relatively frequently. And remember, these variants are beyond the average one. Their sun souls, or solar uh, nahari, Strong, optimistic, have an affinity for positive energy, often seek to lead by example when others would falter. They're drawn both to strong leaders and passionate ethos, and to darkness where they could bring light. Most are fair-haired, their eyes glow brightly, and usually never bother to hide their presence, uh, dressing in whatever clothes they want. Now, if you're looking to encounter a Nahiri in the inner sea region, the most likely location is, of course, Quadria. The people have been living with genies for thousands of years in both positive and negative relationships. And so there are a lot of geniekins. I've talked about with that, but my geniekin video, Quadri is a country that creates a lot of them because they start the tradition of genie binding. And granted, you know, that's not usually a positive relationship, but positive relationships have come out of it. It's a hit or miss depending on, you know, situation. So that's, again, when we're talking about the genie blooded which are a vast majority of them, but not all of them more come from other directions. 
because of their appearance and powers, they were a popular commodity in the slave markets in Quadria. Um, and there are uh, auctions in Sedwick that were particularly known to traffic geniekins and here in general. So it's an unfortunate thing that your large population of Nahiri isn't in the best of situations there. But again, we talked about where they could show up in other places, so, you know, probably spread out throughout Galarian because of the, you know, connections with others and, of course, the uh, influence of uh, Medina uh, Mudia, the city of Brass. But yeah, that's, that's our friend of the Nahiri. Um, there's definitely an interesting case for them. They don't necessarily have it any better or worse than a lot of other genie kin, unfortunately. It's just the unfortunate part about the elemental nature of them means that they stand out. And they can be compared with Cambians. And a lot of their... the A lot of the personality traits that are brought about by fire tend to be very negative in most societies. Meaning that they have to find either... A, they're either alone or find, you know... And that's not by choice, necessarily, or find themselves in situations and societies that are more accepting of them, which may not be the large cities or such that oftentimes some of them can be born into. And of course, it doesn't mean that they can't find acceptance. It doesn't mean they can't find great lives. It also depends on, you know, where you're born from, what your nature is from. Are you born from a mortal and a freedy? Are you born because the influence of elemental fire uh, by chance or by influence of the rulers of the plain of brass and their massive and the city of brass and their massive influence that they have creating servants by seeding them there's a lot of options for stories about how your uh nari came into being and again it, it's one of those things unfortunately about a lot of dual-blooded humanoids and ancestries is you oftentimes don't always find acceptance, love, you know, a good reason for you to be in the society. There's a lot of times situations because there are plenty of decent human societies on Galarian, but there's also a lot of bad societies that you could really be coming from. And a lot of those bad societies are pretty awful to non-humans. Some are getting better. Some are not. So it's a rough world out there. Hopefully you're, if you're playing in the Hiri, you're in a good spot. But they are interesting and, you know, neat character to play. You are fire. And some of the variations and abilities you have are very neat. And honestly, the connections with the Plane of Fire and its power with some places like the City of Brass with uh, Medina Mudaya can be very interesting to have. Maybe you didn't serve them but you could still maybe stay up in contact with them if they uh, were the ones that seeded you. You know? You could have close contact with them. It could be a story in and of itself. Very interesting one. That's it for this episode, though. Hope you enjoyed learning about yet another genie kid. I like talking about them. They have options for stories that can be very dark or very light, you know? I think that's one of those interesting things. It's, it's not that there are, can't be those kind of stories for any particular being. No matter what being you're playing, you could have stories that are very dark or very light, depending on the table you're at, the people you're with, that kind of thing. But this is... The genie can tend to be very pointed towards that a lot, so I like talking about them. They open up for that opportunity naturally a lot more rather than coming up with a dark story. You know, so if you want a dark past and you know something like that, they leave an opening for that pretty well, much more than much more naturally than a lot of other ancestries. If you want to see more tabletop stuff? Tuesdays, Thursdays, early afternoons, usually between one or two, depending on life stuff, and then Saturdays at around eleven when you can check me out. Crimson Queen Pathfinder live play every Wednesday, nine p.m. EST. That's Eastern Standard Time. All my times are Eastern Standard Time. You can check it out. We play Pathfinder First Edition. Really fun. Um, and then, of course, Saturdays at around 6 p.m., discussing tabletop. 
talk about tabletop news of the week and more. Um, I do other stuff on the channels. Remember to check out, if you're on the one, check out the other. I said all the things for support. I have social media, Discord, and Twitter. Check those out. All right, I'm going to get going. I'm going to say to all of you out there, until the next time we chat, farewell. <laughs>